No, you only need to learn to be a lady. The duty isn't yours for to try and run the world. I strongly believe there is a lot of women leadership. Uh, if you look at almost any organization you want to uh, choose, you'll find that uh, the second layer, if you like, or the so-called second layer, is almost always uh, female. These are the people doing all the organizing, all the process management, uh, the kind of backbone of the organization. One of the problems with the traditional forms of leadership that tended to be occupied by men was that they concentrated many different functions and activities in one person. And actually, if we follow the sort of rethinking of leadership that, that women are illustrating, I think what we're implying, building on your example, is actually um, uh, uh, going beyond that first layer, second layer, and recognising that much of the activity that has been traditionally seen as background, second layer, actually is key to the development of an organisation. And so that points to a much more collaborative form of leadership in which you know, the public things like promotion are one important task, but so the tasks that are often really, really responsible of administration, of bringing the organisation together, that sort of caring for the organisation are also key. Um, and that, that this might point also to rotation of functions so everybody understands the different dimensions. So without wanting to fetishise any particular form, I think that idea of seeing leadership as a, as a combination of functions a bit more transparently and therefore collaborative process. For me, the problem is that um, it's not recognised, or that layer is not recognised as leadership. What, what's seen as leadership is the, the central figure, the, the dominant person, the director, the president. Um, um, yeah, I think it's a very patriarchal concept of, of leadership. Um, and, yeah, it's often self-promotion that's being... being um, rewarded or, or expected. Um, I think women tend to be much more comfortable with being part of a team, a much more diffuse sense of leadership. Um, it's much less about uh, ego and personal ambition, ambition, um, and more about commitment to, to the organisation rather than um, to promoting themselves. I think also if one's looking at the question of leadership, one also has to look at the question of power because leadership is in the context of power. Um, and here I wanted to tell a little anecdote from my days as a young woman trade union organiser. I was out in a peri-urban uh, area in a shop, I organised shops, and there was a small workforce, uh, six people, five uh, middle-aged, very... Um, dominant uh, African woman and one uh, young shy man and I asked him who would you like to elect as your shop stewards uh, as your shop steward and all the women um, simultaneously turned around and pointed at the poor young man and I said why I mean why why isn't one of the the women uh, wanting to be uh, a shop steward and they said no why you know, our sense of his role, of his function, is a representative one. You know, he'll go to the meetings with our mandate and he will come back and report to us uh, what, what went on at the meeting. Um, I think that was my first... Uh, well, they also said they had too much to do on Sundays to go to meetings. You know, they, they had all the normal tasks that, that women uh, have, particularly in Africa. Um, but for me, that was my first real concrete lesson in what democratic leadership is all about. I really believe with what Fiona said about women's leadership and I think that in a way it set an example because across the um, world organisations that are about social justice and democratic change are changing their forms of leadership towards uh, leadership that's about sharing power, that's about collaboration, that's about encouraging people. 
And this is a form of leadership that's been, in a way, invented. I mean, not just by women, but in recent years by women, because it's come out of a situation where the previous forms of leadership, based on single centres of power, based on domination, based on single sources of charisma, have subordinated and marginalised women. So as women have become conscious and have fought for their liberation and created their own forms of organisation, they've created forms that are about, in a way, well, they're based on the principle of social change also being about self-change. So they've got an emphasis on the quality of relationships in an organisation, paying attention to whether people are really involved, really understanding, whether the process of activity, of organisation, of being part of a collective is actually transforming themselves. So I think we're seeing a form of leadership that's, that's initiated, invented by women, now spreading. And it's one which also refuses to put the cause above the individuals and the relationships between them, refuses to uh, force people to sacrifice, refuses to make the cause um, a means of legitimating authority and domination. So it's in a way, it's saying leadership has to be about the means. It's not just about leading to a promised land. It's about change in the here and now.